So everybody, um, welcome to uh, Breaking Grounds. Um, vaccinating Android by Milan and uh, Daniel. Um, yeah, give them uh, an applause. Thank you. Uh, my name is Milan Gawar, and today is with me it's Daniel Grah. And we will be talking a little bit about vaccinating Android. So um, let's start. Um, actually, who are we? We are just two guys from Slovenia. So uh, has anybody been to Slovenia yet? Really? Oh, cool, cool. I've been to Romania, uh, giving a talk already there. So um, what, what else do we do? We are but just having fun breaking the stuff. Uh, especially we love to play with the application. So my company is actually spe specialized in application security. So a little bit more about Slovenia, for those that are not so much familiar. Uh, do you guess which kind of the city is Wikipedia talking about this? No, US city. It's 30th most in, U in US. Actually, it's, it's about uh, Las Vegas. Why did I took this? Because uh, metro area of Las Vegas has so many people that are actually living in Slovenia, so about two million people. And uh, we are so small that on a flight, you know, they don't even put our, our capital, uh, capital city or even Slovenia. You, you have Croatia, you have Austria, Hungary, and there's Slovenia, you know, so we are that small. Um, who has been to the last, uh, yesterday's talk about uh, malware? They had that guy had a lot of cute puppies, so we won't have cute puppies, uh, but we will have some nice pictures of Slovenia instead. So you will, you will get a little bit familiar, and maybe um, next time when you're in Europe or in the vicinity, you might be visiting Slovenia. Okay, let's see a little bit more about famous. Slovenian uh, guys. Um, does somebody remember binary planting? It was hyped a couple of years ago, also around the US and conferences. Actually, a company called Acros from Slovenia, um, they made fuzz about it and they exploited it. So this is one part. And we don't only have a good guys, but all, we also have bad guys. Um, this one, it looks, he looks like, almost like Edward Snowden. Is it? Kind of, but uh, does somebody know? Knows who actually he is? No idea? Well, actually he's quite famous also in the United States because FBI was after him. So he was, he is actually, he wrote the, um, he wrote the software around the Mariposa botnet. Somebody hear about Mariposa botnet? It was like in 2009, 2010. Uh, only two countries in the world, they was not infected with the Mariposa botnet. Any guesses which two countries in the world? No? North Korea and South Sahara. Because normally they don't have internet officially, so kind of. Too. Um, he was sentenced last, uh, this year, beginning this year, for four years. Um, I was actually going to his trial because I was really interested. It was, the trial was going on in my city. Uh, and in America, uh, the FBI is still after him. So in Slovenia, he was sentenced to four years. Uh, what do you think, how, much, how many years would he get in the United States? Around 60, yeah, a lot, so, yeah. So we have, um, we have quite, quite famous uh, people in Slovenia also. Okay, so a little bit of agenda. So I'm gonna just skip shortly, so where are we today in the mobile applications, especially Android. Uh, short 101, APK, analysis, going through what's static, dynamic. And then we're gonna go, Daniel is gonna be describing a little bit more about the tool that we wrote. And uh, of course, we're gonna have three, three demos, live demos. Um, 
Who likes demos? Okay, great. Because I, I have been missing demos on B sides. You know, do you also did miss? Because I haven't seen so much demos. You know, everybody was talking about nobody is showing it. So we're going to show it. I hope everything is going to be working. Okay, so where are we today? Uh, actually, also the basic word is complexity, also with uh, Android, uh, especially if you go around the components that are actually in an uh, Android uh, ecosystem. You know, see, there's a lot of, lot of stuff. So a lot, a lot of code and a lot, a lot of uh, stuff to play and exploit it. Also, if we're going to, uh, I don't know if you trust HP 45 team, but they say that uh, from their research, nine of 10 mo mobile apps um, are vulnerable to something or to uh, some, uh, you can exploit them. Uh, and especially in this, in this um, uh, re report, you have also other data that 86% uh, of uh, mobile apps lack sufficiency security measures. Uh, the 80% uh, were having problems with using SSL encryption and a lot of stuff about that. And also Kaspersky says, okay, if you trust also Kaspersky, that 98% of modern mobile threats target Android. Uh, before the talk, I was just, you know, walking around and I was really happy to see that users with iPhones were coming to the talk about Android security, so it's, it's interesting. And there are also some other things. There is a big need for testing mobile application. Uh, last, last year we were getting quite few requests uh, for mobile apps to do the penetration testing. Not just the banking or finance application, but also other, uh, let's say, very popular uh, mobile application from Slovenia. Um, and if you go through uh, source code, of, if you try to uh, reverse some kind of source code, then you see that you know the development of the mobile apps is like development in late 90s. And this is based also on our experience. We, we, uh, we analyzed a lot of uh, mobile applications. Um, we have been working also with the students from faculty uh, on some kind of, say, joint projects regarding uh, mobile security. And we have seen a lot, a lot of, lot of interesting uh, stuff in there. So why actually is this happening? Uh, three things: manager, because the manager is focused on the due dates. Uh, developers are not uh, focused on security, but rather on the features. And the last part: the users actually don't care about the security. So nothing new uh, here. Uh, this is also one nice view of Slovenian capital city. So if you come, Ljubljana is a must. Um, okay, as a penetration testing, as a penetration tester or security analyzer, you're a man on a mission. Now you have to do uh, pen test mobile application, you have to do security analysis, you have to do code review and other stuff. So sometimes it really feels like uh, you need to see, and not only to see, but also feel invisible what's actually hidden in the application and uh, uh, try to get uh, out of it. Uh, once I found a very good, um, let's say, definition, um, what the penetration testers or security analysis or security guys or even hackers are doing, uh, actually we or I or we together as a community, we have been doing the same things as other people. You know, nothing new. But uh, normally we are looking at them just in a different way. Does anybody want to guess who actually said that? Any guesses? He already passed away, but uh, the author, original author of this was Albert, uh, Albert Einstein. So looking outside of this box, uh, it's definitely the right way for the hackers uh, and for the uh, penetration testers. Okay, next thing, if you're in a mobile pen test uh, security, is what to check. There are several things uh, to check. First, definitely transport security. Uh, if the data is uh, transmitted in plain text, if there are uh, some kind of validation of SSL certificates, um, UI web views, there's the problems 
last year there was a problem with your web views because you could do uh, remote uh, code execution. Uh, we, see, we have seen a lot of things uh, regarding insecure data storage, so username, passwords, tokens uh, in uh, SQLite databases or in files. Um, a lot of applications, they are logging. Uh, they are not just logging the necessary data, but also username and passwords and other interesting things. And of course, there is binary analysis. So you need to disass uh, disassembly and decompile or decompile the application and detect obfuscation is something there. How many of you have taken apart APK already? Is it hard? No. no. Okay. But we're going to see uh, how it's actually done this. Okay, this next one is which Linea has also seen. Uh, we only have 30 kilometers of the sea, but we have some beautiful cities. So also a good place to visit. Okay, uh, for those that they are not taken apart uh, APK uh, um, already, so we prepared just a couple of the slides so you see what's actually, how you do it. So when you, go, when you come home, you can, you, can, you can do it on your, on your own. Uh, so we're going to see just what APK is, how do you get it, how you decompile and analyze, and how to test it. So, uh, Actually, it's Android application package file. Um, anyone who knows what's actually that APK? Exactly. Actually, it's a zip file. So you just rename APK to zip. Uh, and you can look at it, unzip it. Um, actually, this is written in exclusively in Java with native libraries. So you can use native libraries regarding if you need the speed or other uh, low-level functions. And it's composed of different uh, components like activities, services, broadcaster series, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're a developer, uh, this is kind of process putting us together with the resource files and assets and source codes. And at the end, you have unsigned, or if you sign it, even signed APK, and you publish it to the store. So how to get an APK? The simplest way is just copy from the phone. If you don't know how to do it, now just go to YouTube, it's um, several videos are there. You can copy it from the backup. If you're doing a backup, you could use uh, Android um, debugging bridge to pull it off. Or you just go to one site, uh, which it will download it for you. So you just put in a name, and you get the APK. Or you can download it from an untrusted source. And you know what it means, maybe some malware inside or something, but you can do it also. So the next step is uh, so to de decompile it. So it's really it's really simple. You just unzip it and then pull out the tech jar or even tech jar. You can get it from APK so classes and we JD GUI. You just open this jar and you got the whole Java source of the application. These are also the tools that are used. Uh, who is using Kali? Linux distribution, penetration testing distribution. All the tools are already there. So you don't need to install it, anything. Uh, or you can use that, um, that URL address. It will do everything on you. You just upload APK. It will decompile it, and it, you can save it to your own uh, hard drive. OK, um, since only a couple of hands were up, I will pass now to Daniel. He will show you how to just uh, decompile it and get the source code from one APK. Okay, can you hear me? I will do just uh, show you how simple it is um, to get the source code of the Android application. Uh, just to warm myself up uh, because uh, more serious stuff will come. So I'm just I'm just moving the application into a zip file. And then I'm unzipping it. Then I'm calling dex to jar. 
to get uh, the Java bytecode out of Dalvik bytecode. Take some time. And now I will run Judy GUI. How many of you know Judy GUI? Sorry. I forgot in which directory I am. Okay. And here you can see the source code. But as you can see, the source code has a pretty, uh, just leave it for a second. Here, uh, just uh, you see, the, the their developers were quite uh, quite good because their classes are named A A A A B C A A C. Oh, cool. Okay, uh, what do, what do you think they did before they publishing the application? Yeah, obfuscator replacing the name and the methods. So our job is going to be a little bit. Uh, uh, a little bit harder, but not uh, not that hard. Okay. Um, we still also have some other cities at the sea, but that's it. Okay. The next thing is testing the application. Now, what's the the next step? The next step: start simulator with the proxy. Why with the proxy? Because we want to see what's actually the application is sending to the server, or what is uh, communicating. Uh, install application in emula emulator or device. Normally we are using device because emulator is sometimes really slow. Um, and use Wireshark, Fiddler's app, Burp, whatever you like. Who's using Burp? Who's using Zap? Nobody's using Zap. Okay. You run application, see the log, dump, crash, and files, and other stuff. And when you do the uh, analysis of what you sent over the network, you see the interesting. What? Yeah, you see the interesting stuff. And especially here, you know, the responses back from, a, from the server to the application, you know. Uh, I, I, I guess, you know, from the first site, you can decrypt what's actually written there. So uh, that's why we are also playing with. Uh, binary dynamic, uh, dynamic analysis, because uh, these kind of values that's actually sent from the server to the application, they are setting to some kind of variables in application. So uh, you're going to see later on uh, why uh, it's much easier to interact in that, kind, that way that we did it with application that decrypting and uh, seeing the stuff uh, here. If you want to play, there are other tools like Dexter with Dexlab. It's a thing is beta, so you can see all the stuff that's actually done here. So the classes, the compilation, what's actually sent over the, uh, the, over the internet. Then you have uh, from Guy uh, Balic, uh, I think he's from Turkey. You also have one online uh, analyzing uh, tool. You just upload the application. You just upload the APK, and he does everything for you. Uh, he's that guy that actually crashed the Google Play when he was playing with uh, with uh, some ex exploits, um, and I think the Google Play was uh, unavailable for several hours. Uh, just uploading one APK to Google Play and pff, the system went down. Uh, okay, and the next step is static uh, analysis. So, if you want to do static analysis, you need to know how to read the Java, uh, Java, Java code, or at least a little bit, you know, um, how to program. How many people do you know how to read or how to program in Java? Okay, some of them. Great. 
Uh, what's the problem also with static analysis? Because you don't see any runtime replies. You know, you just see the code. You know, nothing what's getting from the server, and it's obfuscated. It's rename, and sometimes if the code is really, really uh, huge, uh, there is a problem identifying important segments in the code. So decryption, uh, where it's sending to the server, how it's done with the logging, and things like that. Okay, after we dived into static analysis, uh, we wrote a tool and it's basically a bash script that uses other tools and it's used for decompiling the unread application and searching for patterns of source code. So for example, if you identify a Java source that is vulnerable, you can place all the unread application into one directory and just run this tool, Apikaiser it's called, and uh, put some regular expression into it, and this will show something similar to this. And here you can see uh, that we search for HTTP, HTTPS, and protocols like that. Uh, so basically what application uh, uses to connect to the server. And it gives you a brief description of uh, source code and where it's located, this source. So when you're doing statical analysis, you might be feeling lucky, you know, especially in Las Vegas, my feeling lucky is very important because sometimes uh, you, s you find in a source code things like that, you know, just some server name, API, save, PHP, uh, T and T U. What if there is a game? Who wants to guess what actually T and U is? This is a, except from the source code, you know, the server, actually, actually with this call you publish your score to the server. So the T are number of points and the U is username. So doing a statical analysis, you just see that kind of code, you know, just put it in a browser, you know, uh, just enter the scores and you are at the top list of the scores. And sometimes if you're not lucky, you get uh, this kind of stuff because all the tools for decompilation, they don't decompile it uh, totally to see the Java code. So you get the intermediate codes and sometimes it's really hard just looking at the, at the source code. So with dynamical analysis, what we are looking into, actually it's monitoring and changing traffic with uh, proxy. I have sh shown already something before uh, with uh, burp. Uh, or you can use debugging, and there's another method you can use, reflection. So actually, what's reflection? Reflection is a language ability to inspect and dynamically call classes, methods, attributes at the runtime. So Java is perfect for this, with uh, use of uh, uh, your reflection. And that's the principle that we have been using in our tool, and it's worked just perfectly. And we use another uh, component, it's called Beanshell. Who knows what Beanshell is? Anybody used it already? It's really nice library, Java library. Actually, Java interpreter. So scripting, support scripting languages is really small. You can uh, include it uh, in your project. And um, it has already all the methods for the reflection. And since we are kind of sometimes lazy and we didn't want to write and invent uh, history again and again, we just use Beanshell and it's really getting as a really strong and powerful tool. So uh, why should we go with uh, reflection not, uh, and not debugging? Uh, because with the reflection you have higher level of view. You have classes, methods, uh, and you have a better idea how application works. Especially you have a, a source code, so if you do the decompilation, you get the source code, you see all the classes, even if they have strange names like AAAB, ABC, um, and you get the all access to objects, methods, and variables, and you got the real interaction with applications, so in, in real runtime, so you can see. So these are all the features that we got, so we can access all the variables, even if they are declared private and it shouldn't be accessed from uh, other classes, we can change it, call methods, so you could call methods, I don't know, if you have uh, encrypted string, you could just call method decrypt and you get the uh, uh, decrypted string, 
And with Bean Shell, you can use all use, use only also your own variables in scripts and uh, actually write a Java code. So you're going to see, we're going to show how it's with four, five, six lines of code. You can do very good uh, ultimate cheating, uh, 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 cheating uh, machine. So what else do we see in uh, analyzing with dynamic and statical uh, uh, analysis? There's authentication pins in the system logs and the builds. Uh, credential are cached. Uh, SQLite databases, there are usernames and passwords. Uh, when we analyzed APKs, there are also internal IPs. So you get the internal IPs of the banks, other financial institutions. And sometimes you can get even hard-coded usernames, passwords, especially for the HTT protected areas. Um, a lot of applications have uh, this kind of things inside. Okay, we also have uh, rivers, pretty nice river, really nice rivers. So if you want to come to Slovenia, that's definitely a uh, place to be. Okay, Daniel is going to be dig a little bit deeper, and he's going to explain what actually we did, and then show some demos to to get you feeling what's actually there. So after digging deeper, we came up with a tool. It's called Voxine, and. Uh, what Voxine actually does, it takes an Android application, injects a service into it, and then connects through the service to the application. After it's connected, it lives inside the application, so you can access all the variables, private, public, you can execute uh, Java source code, or bin shell scripts, or something else. Here you can see the environment in which Voxine functions. On the left side, you can see the Android application. And on the right side, <coughs> uh, Voxine consists mainly of three parts. It's a user interface, a bash script, that's its uh, controller, and a component that is called manifest changer. What actually a bash script does is it takes the application, it unzips it, it uh, uses a tool that's called Smalley. Does anybody know Smalley? Okay, for those that don't know Smalley, it's assembly language for uh, Dalvik bytecode. And then we are adding our own code into Smalley, repackaging it again to the classic classes DEX file, uh, changing the manifest, and include it, or let's say replacing this uh, manifest and classes DEX in the original APK. And after that, we are uh, removing the signature, signing the application, installing, connecting, and so on. Uh, so what is possible with Voxine is accessing objects and fields, executing methods of objects and other stuff. I will show you that. Here is the user interface of Voxine. On the left upper part, you can see the hierarchy of objects. These objects are used at runtime by the application. Uh, below you can see the scripting part. Here you can write scripts or regular Java source code. And there's another view on the right side. Yeah, if you, if I just want to show you, you know, its tool is really complicated, you know, as the uh, normal hacking tools are. So it's from three parts, you know, and that three parts are uh, actually doing the you could do a really lot of interesting stuff. Actually, you do coding, you write your own code here, and when you're calling execute, it's actually executing in uh, runtime of the environment of the application. So the best way is to show the demo. Um, and I think the best way is to try with the live application. So we're going to play a little bit games, you know, since we are in Vegas. It's definitely a good place to play the game. Okay, I will now start Voxine. Okay, Voxine started. Let's start the game. So this is this what you see here. It's actually this this device here. So we are uh, bringing the. Uh, it's not working. Okay. 
So you see, you have, it's actually the same, uh, same, uh, same display as on uh, on, a, on a phone. So if we wanna, can I play? No, just a second. I will show you that I am uh, on the application. I will show a message. So actually, we can interact with uh, uh, with application that's running on a phone. Uh, and copying it just to vaccine. So, so you can see. So, it's actually running there. So it's a knock knock. Uh, so we can now interact or change all these variables or classes. Actually, is uh, uh, running in, in this application. Can I play now? Yes. Okay, let's play the game. Um, okay. Okay, play now. Okay, it's the same game, you know, you need to have, I don't know, uh, okay. It's already ended, because I, um, we have to wait for another round. But uh, we can still already print some, uh, some words. See here, there are words that actually, uh, you need to find them in a game. So let's wait for uh, well, just a second. Okay, here's the round results. Okay, not connect. Okay, get started. Let's try another round. Play now. Crash. Wait a yeah, we have a lot of problems with Wi-Fi. We tried to play it. Um, who knows English word? Uh, jet. Okay, let's try with jet. Okay, I found the jet. Hot. It's also. But actually, you can see I already printed the correct results out. So if you do the statical analysis and you have hesitate, hesitate, hesitate. Okay, okay. I found I found the top word now. So actually, you have uh, access to the all kind of the words. And if you remember that burp screenshot that I showed, actually that these words are transferred uh, over the HTTP to the application, but they are encrypted, so you cannot see what kind of words are actually transferred, but with this kind of uh, methods you can access unencrypted words stored in a hash table in an application. Okay, we need to wait for another round. And after that, uh, I will drop the answers on the user interface. So, just wait a second. So we found a way, actually the, the, this uh, kind of application is actually obfuscated. So there are classes change name, but I don't know, for some reason they didn't change the name of the method like dam dump answers. So this method, uh, Daniel is gonna call it, now you can dump. All right, I have the, it's not sure. Okay, let's reconnect. Okay, if he now calls this kind of method, uh, you see, I got the ownership. Uh, I got the whole word already there, and actually, it's uh, oh, no, oh, oh, ownership, and you can actually the win every time in this kind of the game. But uh, I have also written a script that uh, will play this game alone. So uh, it will fill out all the answers and then uh, set the user to besides Las Vegas and hopefully win this game. So you see, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But we can actually just put together in six lines of code. So with six lines of code, uh, 
it's actually winning the game all the time. You know? Why did we choose this game? Because my wife really likes to play it. Uh, and that's why we were playing with uh, that game. Especially it was really nice because last year we done it in Romania. So we have been playing with that kind of game in Romanian language. So we were winning every time and we didn't know what actually we were in, you know, inserting this because there were Romanian words. And we played this year in Paris, the same game in uh, French words and we, we were also winning the French words. So. So now you can see B-Sides as you top see? score. B-Sides as a top, top score at that time. You know? I hope they don't see it. So let's move on because we really want to, s s we, we are saving one last demo uh, f uh, as the last one and it would be too bad if we don't get to last demo. So, okay. Okay. Oh, shit. We forgot disclaimer. Now, everything that we are showing, you know, it's just for educational purposes. But anyway, you know, since we are in Vegas, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. At least they say so. So you're going to keep the secrets. Uh, which game did we go? Okay, we also have some, kind of, some castles, really nice castles. Really nice uh, cave behind that castle in Postojinske Amo. So you can come and visit. And there's a, let's say, a next episode, because now we have been changing APK, but Daniel is going to explain that uh, after CCC 30 uh, from December last year, uh, we found a new method that we don't need to change APK as anymore, but Daniel is going to, is going to tell a little bit more. So we saw a talk. Uh, it's, it was about dynamical uh, Dalvik instrumentation. And what this stuff does, uh, this guy, Colin Moulinar, built a framework that can be used to hook Java methods. So uh, any Java method that the application uses and the underlying Android framework. So we did scratch ourselves, how can we use this? And after some help from Colin, uh, we came up with a solution uh, to inject our service and use Vuxin without touching the application. So everything is done at runtime. But <coughs> you need to do some stuff and uh, use the framework, the hijack program. We are hijacking the uh, Zigot process. How many of you know, know Zigot? Zigot is a process uh, it's like mother nature. Every application it's uh, forked from this process, and yeah, it's mother nature. Um, and uh, after using hijack, we inject our uh, library, and uh, we hook the Android app activity on start method. So everything is in place, and we can use Vuxin. So I will show you how to do this uh, on Google Play Store. So here you can see I'm on the phone and I have already placed all the necessary things and uh, I will run the hijack program. But first we need to know the pit of the uh, Zigot process. It's 140. So I am actually waiting for the application to start. So let's run the application. So actually now on the phone, our application already started. So you see the Google Play Store is actually uh, starting up. It takes a little bit longer because it's now loading our our classes runtime and injecting into a uh, into a virtual machine. 
So all the vaccine and all the classes from bean shell and other stuff is actually uh, already there. So we didn't touch any more APKs, and we are actually hooking on start method and uh, running it uh, there. We also need to forward the port that service is listening on it, and then to start, and then we get the same Java GUI, and you can now interact with uh, Google Play and all the classes that are actually there. So just to prove you that uh, I am on the application, I will print the user ID. Um, just before uh, Daniel is look, uh, is uh, searching for the code with uh, vaccine. Here you have all the methods and all the variables. And if they change, they're changing the colors to the red. So you can easily spot what's actually changed in the in the runtime from the last uh, uh, from the last uh, update. And here you can set the watches. You can set the variables that you want to watch, you know, uh, and to see which kind of uh, variable are watching, are now, changing. Now here you can see the output, and it's called com and read winding. This is the package, um, so the Play Store. Okay. Um, um, what are the changes between two methods that we have been uh, researching? With APK, there is no need to, you, for you to have the rooted phone. You just change APK and upload it with uh, ADB. Uh, ADB needs to be, uh, of course, enabled and untrusted sources, you can install it on your device, but no root, and you have to download it, modify and upload, but vaccine takes care. With uh, going to the Android, so uh, hijacking and, uh, and injecting the libraries, uh, you need to have rooted phone. Uh, but there's no need for modification for APK because somehow with the APKs, you know, they are checking if uh, some kind of modification it has been done on APK. But um, um, we found only a few uh, packages that are actually um, looking for that kind of things. Okay, there's another beauty in Slovenia, so definitely worth to see it. Okay, there are some definitely challenges ahead of us. Um, what can you do with this kind of tool? Actually, it's not only for Android. You know, you can use it. Uh, we actually had one project this year. We actually tested it with Oracle Forms. Who knows what Oracle Forms are? Is still somebody using Oracle Forms? Sadly, yes. I thought they were dead until the, the client, you know, contacted us. Yeah, and we we actually injected this in Oracle Forms. So in the process, with a little bit uh, modifying with Burp for requests. So when the form was uh, downloading, we actually injected our code before started Oracle Forms, and then actually we happily lived in Oracle Forms. Um, uh, so the reflection is still not dead because there are some other projects like Java Snoop. You could actually attach to the Java process and you do the same, but we tried with Java Snoop and uh, uh, it was not working uh, with the latest version of Java. And we tried to contact authors and we didn't get any reply. And definitely we have ideas to use with other Java applets, you know, Minecraft maybe, or uh, um, some other ERP systems that are using Java. That would be the, definitely the perfect way uh, to use it. Uh, uh, for changing and injecting into Oracle Forms, how many times? We did spend about five hours, you know, to change everything, and we are running with the GUI and expect, inspecting all the elements. So there are also other kind of possibilities, uh, because with this kind of, you know, you don't need to package and then repackage. You can just write it uh, and compile it at the runtime, so you can have, get the phone instance. You can send. The class zero SMSs, uh, also other, or even you create ultimate cheating platforms. Uh, so final thoughts before we uh, wrap up. It's just one small script, small GUI tool. It's gonna be never finished. Now it can help testers, researchers, or even hackers, cheaters. And we are open for suggestions. Uh, and improvement comments, we're gonna be publishing it uh, on our GitHub. So it's going to be freely available. Just download it, run it, 
uh, give us uh, feedback. We will be really thankful for it. Uh, and some other tips, you know, if you're doing the uh, Android development, you have to know your platform. You know, this means read more than one book, uh, different than iOS, Android in 10 minutes. And especially experience and mileage helps a lot. You know, uh, experience from different kind of fields, especially developing a Java application. Okay, but since we are in Vegas, we cannot go uh, at the end without any demo. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I was a little bit thinking more like online blackjack. Good enough? Okay, let's try one game and uh, you're going to see um, how it's easy. Now that's the code that Daniel is uh, actually copying now uh, to help playing with blackjack. What would help playing blackjack? Would it help if you see the next card that it's coming? Would that be good? If you see next four cards, would it help? Let's see if we can try to make a... Uh, um, okay, I will, be, I will be playing the blackjack. I'm not really good gambler. Just a second. Um, okay, there, there you see... Uh, actually, actually, we took... Uh, we took one one game from the App Store. I don't know. It's quite popular. It has several million downloads. So let's try to play uh, the game. Are you ready? You have Just a second. Let's play the game. You see, we can show a little bit code. Uh, what's actually doing the code for those that can read Java up, 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 up. So first of all, we a uh, little bit sniff the traffic, so we see that uh, mapping from one resources resources to to other. So actually, these are the cards. So uh, we could write uh, normal cards, but we extended it. So actually, we're gonna see the cards uh, from resources, so images, and this is the actually the code that's actually showing the games and uh, all the. Uh, stop doing. It's not that much. Uh, all of the code was uh, encrypted and obfuscated. We still can use it. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's play. See, I started the game. Okay. Uh, it's starting. Let's sit here on this left. Buy into the game. Okay, I'm into the game. I'm only with two players in a bank. Wait for another turn. So you will notice that when the hit button pops up, it will show the next card the user will receive. Yeah, so let's deal the cards. Okay, so you see the next card is going to be eight spade. So if we uh, 14 and 14 and 8, it's 22. That's so, so good. That's not, I was busted. So I lose 300 dollars, points, whatever. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, 17. So let's see the next. Now it's your turn. Should we stand, double, or hit? Okay, stand. And you will see the bank will take this card. Yeah. So we will level up. So for the next level. And actually this kind of, uh, it gets you four next cards. We are trying to get on the GUI, but it's kind of problems because, you know, cannot just write on the GUI this kind of images. But with the lock, uh, you see all the four cards, next four cards. Or you can do, uh, you can count the cards because every four times they are shifting. So you can do your own model and you know, you just play it and... Uh, okay, let's see the next four cards. Okay. Then we're finished. 
Okay. Yes. Good. Uh, no, and the cards are outputted to the system output. Yeah, see, the next four cards are eight diamond, jack, uh, uh, club, ten hearts, and uh, queen spade. Okay, let's do another one and to see if this is true. Uh, what should it, let's say hit. I have a blackjack, so it was eight spade. So it works. So it actually works. Actually, we are living in, inside the application. And we have the full control of all the all the variables, and this is why is this interesting? Because normally variables they are not encrypted. You know, they are just values, so you can be scored. You know, you can be you pausing with uh, this run with, with runtime. So a lot of lot of crazy ideas you can get from uh, from this. Okay, so we didn't have cute puppies, but at the end we can have nice cat. Actually, it's my cat enjoying the sun, uh, taken a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and yes, some questions. No questions. Okay, you can stop us. You can bug us. We will be here. We will be at DEF CON. Uh, so at the end, thank you very much. Oh, one question. Uh, it's going to be, I don't know, at the end of this week. So it's going to be there, zip, you just call it. Uh, it's not uh, It's not malware, so not no malware inside, but you can decompile it and use it. So it's going to be free. So, Okay, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy it. Uh.